I'm Mike Englehart. I want to show you how to import a third-party model into QSpice. This will be fairly useful because as QSpice eases into beta, there aren't that many models included with the software. Now say you found some model off the web that you want to use. Take this 4148 and you want to include it in QSpice. Select the model, the text of the model, type control C, go to QSpice and type control V. It will ask if it should try to make a symbol for that and say yes. And that is how to import a third party model. Now, say you, let's, let's do another example. Let's take a, a transistor, a 3904. Select the text, type control C, go to QSpice, control V, um, and then there's the model. In fact, I'm going to want two of these because I'm going to, let's try running this thing and let's run it as a, um, as a circuit that makes a quadratic waveform, uh, that squares, that squares an input. All right, so the input is a current and the out output will be the collector current of Q1. So let's put the input current here. I'll use a piecewise linear that's zero at zero seconds and at three milliseconds, 200 microamp. All right. So that's my circuit. And let's see if it runs. There is the input current. And here is the output current. I, I'm, I'm plotting the collector current of Q2. And that's supposed to be the a, a line square. So let's take the square root of it. And indeed, that is a um, that circuit does a, uh, performs a quadratic of an input current. All right, so that's that's the good news. That works very well if your model that you're trying to is import is defined with a dot model statement. If it's a dot model statement, it's modeled as a native circuit element. And if it's a native circuit element, QSpice knows exactly what symbol to use, and the whole thing will work flawlessly. What's not so nice is when you need to import a, a model that's modeled as a sub circuit and for that let's import a model of a 741 op app this is the official model of an L, of an lm 741 and um all this text is the model is modeled as a sub circuit so to import this model first type control a to select the entire file type control c then come over to QSpice, type control V, and it says, shall it make a symbol? And that sounds good. Yes, let's make a symbol. But there you have the bad news. The symbol is just a box, doesn't look like an op amp, and you have no idea what pin does what. Well, you're going to have to look at the documentation uh, of the um, uh, uh, of the of the model. Here it tells you what pin does what. Okay. Um, we, now we can rearrange the pins. We can make this box look a little bit better. Like 50 is the negative supply. Let's put that on the bottom. 28 is the output that can stay on that side. Um, the non-inverting input is one. I usually like the non-inverting input below the inverting input. The inverting input is number two here. So let's put that higher. And 99 is the positive supply. Okay, now we can change the pin justification. If you double click on a pin, you can label it. Don't label it, don't change the name of it or it, um, uh, it won't know what port it is when, it, uh, when, you, uh, when you try to expand the circuit. Uh, you just wanna change the justification. You, you, you click on one of these red dots and that will change the justification. And so that's a little bit better. You know what, let's first run this thing before we go any further. Uh, let's make, um, let's power it up. And, um, 
we'll put a we'll program the gain with the volts divider. Nine k, one k. We'll uh, put an input on uh, uh, a certain input to the non-inverting supply. And let's see if how that works. So there's the input of a hundred millivolt amplitude. And there's the output of one volt amplitude. So this is a times 10 gain um, non-inverting um, uh, non-inverting amplifier. Uh, let's see how much they've really modeled with this thing. Let's do a, a, a pulse source. So there is the output, and see the input is 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 a raises in a, in a, a the rise time is one nanosecond. Let's look at the output. Let's differentiate this thing. All right, so it's about three hundred kilovolts per second. Um, you know, 0.3 microvolts per second. You know, that's about right. Looks like they have the slew rate about right on this guy. Okay, so. That's that's all the good news, but the, again, we have this bad news that this thing just looks like a, a square box. Let's show you. Let me show you how to fix that. To do more than moving the pins around to actually um, edit the graphics of the symbol, you need to put it in the symbol editor. So let's start a symbol editor over here. File, new, symbol, and. We're going to paste this symbol into the symbol editor. So make this uh, point at this, type control C, go over the symbol editor, control V, and there it is. Let's first get rid of the box. Uh, let's, um, let me make a triangle here. Let me improve them up, make the proportions a bit more normal for an op amp graphic uh this can and um i'm going to okay so that's about the right proportions now i don't want these if i'm going to use graph if i'm going to uh, relate the information of the pins through graphics i don't want the pin names displayed so the way you hide the display names is you, you use a very special justification. If you double click on the label of a, uh, on a, on a, a pin label, any one of these red dots selects a different justification and the center red dot makes it invisible. So let me hide these pin names. Let me add some wires here. All right. And um, it's good to label, you know, that this is the non-inverting input. So I can do that with um, uh, adding a little plus and minus sign. Uh, here, we're going to add some text. We're going to put it there. We're going to call that minus. But we're going to have to make it a comment. Type control C, control V. We're going to put another piece of text, make this plus. All right. So that looks much more like an op amp. Oh, I, I will tell you a couple of things about the symbol editor. You have um, the, the symbol editor tries to be, you know, friendly. It has, um, it has the graphic primitives that you would usually use in trying to define symbols. For example, if you'd like to draw the American style uh, zigzag, there'll be it's a native element you don't have these chaotic looking resistors that look like they belong on a ransom note uh if you have um you know, a coil 
is a native circuit element. And you see the, the beautiful coils that are in a, in a QSPI schematic. Those are not GIFs. That's just a native, uh, a, a native graphic element. Okay, but that's, that's now our op amp. So to paste this back in, uh, you, uh, if you don't point at anything in the symbol editor and type control C, the entire symbol is pasted onto the clipboard. And then if we go over to the schematic, we get rid of this symbol, type control V and it will instance up the symbol as a component. And now let's try this again. There's the output and there's the input. We can go back to a uh, sine wave. And there we have it. That is how you include third-party models in QSpice. It, um, it's very good at running uh, any type of um, uh, generic spice models, you know, P-spice models and so on. Um, and I think, you know, that was the message of this video. I uh, hope you find it useful. Um, that's it.